Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today I'm with three very special guests from the band Avenue East. I got Tyler to the left of me. I got Jay to the diagonal of me, or adjacent. We got Alan right in front of me. And uh, I don't really know how to describe your music because I'm still new to bands, but it sounds to me like straight out of like Nightmare on Elm Street, you know? <laughs> like It's like an 80s... Is it metal? Maybe metal, but mixed with like some Michael Jackson elements. Who, who's the lead singer of this group? That'd be this Tyler guy. right there. No yeah. way. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Almost every performance I've ever had, I come off the stage and people are like, "That's not your voice." That's a, really. I wasn't <laughs> really expecting you to sound like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're like the, the best compliment ever. Someone goes, "That voice with that body." <laughs> they're trying like, to body shame you it's like what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to typecast you and that, that's and that's not okay here on the NAS podcast okay? know, that, right? that's why we're here because yeah, we we're here because we're setting the record straight there we go we love your morale and well, we would like to change that <laughs> in society today yes so actually so you go from like Michael Jackson to the the is that what's going on in that music um, in your album, usually the Zach guy. I roar over a bit. Yeah, can we hear it on the podcast? Uh, <laughs> you got well. You got a couple different because you could do the. You could do a loud one. It, yeah, like, the, yeah, there's the loud like you know. Uh, the good night man. The let's go. You know, you're like I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's not like we're doing death metal. Right. It's like. I do sneak a little. <laughs> I sneak a little Cookie Monster, the the one. Uh, <laughs> the body to the moon. Kind of thin line. Yeah, you ripped that last yeah. week. Yeah. We had a show last week, and it sounded good. It did. I was, I was, <laughs> I was screaming into that mic, going like, "Oh, I hope it always sounds this good." I don't always know. <laughs> like it, I, I just have never experienced. I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm not really. Don't know much about bands yet, but I really enjoyed your sound. So I'm happy that you guys are here, and I. I, c I couldn't tell anyone how to describe your music versus this album you guys have out, The Good Night Man and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is how I <laughs> how I cap. That's that. a good. I mean, it's a good. Uh, gives a good uh, ambiance to the to the vibe of that particular yeah. Uh, EP. Yeah, I um, mean, definitely like old school emo pop punk kids. So that translates a lot. And, and this isn't your guys' first band. Or project. I heard projects. We've all say. done different stuff oh, in yeah. the past. Um, Tyler and I were in a band uh, called Life as Cinema uh, before Avenue East. Um, I'm currently Jay. in another band yeah. as well called Aurora's Eyes. And so, mm. yeah, both bands I have to be in have to have the same initials. Yep. And have you guys always a requirement. played the same instruments or vocals? or? Yes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, Jay. You kind of play whatever's required for. Yeah, pretty much Aurora's like. Eyes. <laughs> well, Aurora's Eyes, the first EP and album were all written by me, so I mm. I did all the instruments for it, and uh, but now that turned into a band, so it's more collaborative than anything else. But um, I l literally got the text basically to come help fill in for Avenue East, and then. I liked it so much, I wanted to be a part of it. So I was mm. like, hey, there's nothing going on on the other AE. Let me join yours. <laughs> so you guys must have all known each other for a while then, if you can just get a text and be like, hey, you want to? I knew Alan. Um, so the drummer who's been helping us out, Avenue East out, um, he was forming a band. He lives hi, right Aaron. near me. Yeah, hi, Aaron. Aaron, hi. Aaron. Um, he lives right near me, about 15 minutes north of me. And you live and in Ballard, right? No, I live up in Lake Stevens. Oh, you live near me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in yeah. Snohomish. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. So uh, he lives up in Marysville. Okay. And so I would go up to his house. He finished up a record uh, under the band name Find Forever, and it was like super pop punky kind of like heavier pop punk, like a day to remember kind of stuff. And um, he just needed a, another guitar player. So I went up there and, you know, was doing that for a bit. And then just some inconsistencies were happening. The drummer that we had at the time just wasn't working out. And so we were trying to figure what we were going to do with that. And um, I just didn't know what was happening. And Alan texted me one day. He's like, hey, does Aurora's Eyes want to come open 
a show for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's not possible, but I have another band that can do it. Because Aurora's Eyes is, we're all in different parts of the the West Coast now. So it's been kind of hard to get together. It's all via Zoom. So but you guys have been together at one point. Oh, yeah. We were all together from 2019 through the middle of 2020. Um, but then two of the guys moved. One of them moved to L.A. The other guy, uh, our drummer, moved. Or he, he moved back to Portland, but then he did a cross-country bicycle trip. Oh. Went from Portland, Maine to Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine. And then down to Jacksonville, Florida. Just to be funny to go. No, from just to, to do it. Forrest, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Forrest Gump status. <laughs> he's uh, he he's like a Forrest Gump kind I of just individual. Felt like biking. <laughs> I, I can't bike no more. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> so, Sorry, Ben. <laughs> um. So, anyways, I was just like, yeah, let me or um, we'll try to play the show, and then all of a sudden the drummer thing didn't work out with Fine Forever, and I had to break the news to Alan. He's like, oh, well, do you want to? <laughs> Come play guitar for us? <laughs> yes. I've been waiting for this, honestly, because when I first heard the, you know, the song Good Night Man and heard some of it, I'm like, man, I wish I was doing this. You know, I was Damn. like, then I was, I was, I was really hoping like they were looking for somebody at the same time, but I never got that message until like that moment. I was like, oh, timing is everything, right? So, <laughs> so Avenue East is like your baby then, or? Um, it started with Tyler. So originally okay. we were in Life of Cinema together and, um, and actually some of the, like the concepts behind the, the story of Avenue East that's kind of told through the songs, um, was kind of, uh, tossed around as an idea to do with Life of Cinema. Yeah. Um, we, we talked about doing specific albums or something like yeah, that. Yeah. More of a concept. Story, yeah. I love concept um, album, as, yeah. by the way. So that, I think that's one reason why I enjoyed it so much. Like, oh, year over the pandemic, I've been watching. I've been just listening to so many different. Like, do you know who Mike Posner is? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He he just released a. It's been a couple months though. He released a concept album to the point that like his lyrics were actual like words talking to another person, and it was kind of crazy. It was about uh, him being Mike Posner, but it was like a fake Mike Posner being a washed up artist. And then at the end he kills himself and like it's nice. a hmm. it's like it's a it's actually like very cinematic and like it's it's probably one of my favorite albums i haven't heard anyone who's listened to it but <laughs> you guys should check out that so continue yeah, my bad <laughs> <clears throat> no but, uh we're, so we were tossing around that idea back in the day and then when um life of cinema uh came to a rap um why did it come to a rap uh, it was a uh, long story. That's for another uh, podcast. Yeah, that's a, a, <laughs> <laughs> um, a whole bunch of different people wanted to do different things. And it uh, it uh, ultimately was, it was a rocky rap on it, but ultimately everybody involved with it kind of came to a good place together and um, moved on and to do better things that everyone's happier with. Okay. You know, it's like you know, the, the, the divorce oh. where... Both people end up going off in in other relationships, and everybody's happier, and it all gets along better as a family. Yeah, that's a. That's but a you got that's Tyler kind of, every yeah. other weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yep. So, um, I was I was kind of looking around for a new project. That's actually where I first ran into Jay because Jay was kind of doing a similar thing, looking for. So when I was looking for musicians for our eyes, Alan hit me up about helping out, like just doing fill in work. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I'm not looking for a fill-in guy. I'm kind of looking for a permanent thing. And then um, it just didn't work out at the time, you know. But, but we stayed in touch. We stayed in touch. He yeah. liked my memes. So oh, you're, 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 that's, that's you're <laughs> I'm a shit poster. Memes? Oh, you know? it's, it's God tier. It's God tier. Oh. God tier meme posting. I'm a meme lord, mama. I have a second. <laughs> I have a no, I have a third Instagram account just to just like. Just for memes? Yeah, because I, I love memes so much. And I'm like. <laughs> If anyone who follows the NAS podcast or my main account just sees these accounts I follow, I think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like we just kept in touch and uh, we didn't actually meet in person until the uh, the very first rehearsal where I came and kind of just did an audition almost. It felt like more of an audition than it did a rehearsal or a fill-in gig or anything like that. and felt great just it felt like i've been with these two already for like years damn you know it's kind of was that kind of like feeling in the room it just didn't feel like there's no awkwardness that was the coolest part of it was just like there's there's sometimes when you go into a rehearsal room with guys you've never jammed before 
and mm-hmm. you can already tell that this guy murders people. He skins cats. <laughs> he uh, he's too close to his mother. <laughs> Um, you know, kind of weird shit like that. I've been in weird room, like weird rehearsals where we were trying out somebody and the dude was like just maybe three months fresh out of prison. Oh God. And, uh, he was like also like a recovering meth head, but like he had brand new, like gear that was not like nice gear. It was like, what was that? Black star amplifiers. That's like, they try to look like they're Marshall, but mm. they're like line six quality kind of shit. <laughs> and I remember being in a rehearsal rehearsal room with the rest of the band. We're trying out this guitar player and this guy, he was like halfway tweaking out while like pl- trying to play these riffs that we wrote. And each member of the band started walking out of the room slowly. Uh. <laughs> you just see each member just walking out. And then I look at him and go, I think we're going to take five. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looks at me and goes, okay, I guess that's how it is. And just packs his shit and leaves. He just got, <laughs> he just got the clue like right there. But that saves an awkward conversation. I know. Right. He went to go skin some cats outside. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but there was none of that feeling at all. Honestly, with, with this, with getting together with Alan and Tyler and, um, I was just felt grateful for that, you know. Hell you yeah. also you also learned your shit too. I did because you, you like came Tyler in. It's like oh, he recorded all the videos yeah. so I could learn. Yeah. It was I, like oh, he's actually like practiced this at home and came prepared. I wanted and... I wanted the gig. I st- I still go. <laughs> I'll I'll go back through my my photos and my phone yeah. looking for something, and I'll come across like all the videos where I'm just looking at the camera. I'm like okay, verse one riff. This is how it goes. A. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like the funny thing was just like you know how you're saying like when people are like oh that's that's you singing up there like <laughs> I didn't know who Tyler was at all even like I'd never met him but like I saw in the videos like the, the like the tutorial shit like oh that's you it was like the Wizard of Oz you had to pull the, pull the curtain back to find the but it was I mean it's been awesome like you know it's about what you can so it's been since 2019 you guys have been a no. band 2020 or uh i guess well, 19 guys, yeah. origin yeah would so go back to 19 when so after life is cinema there was probably a solid year year and a half yeah, about and uh i started writing some tunes and i think i originally reached out to you to see if you would just help me yeah demo them because you were like hey like you know since we're not doing anything i've been working on this stuff and uh would you help me demo them out and I had just gotten a new like kind of home studio set up and I was eager to kind of like break it in and get used to yeah. everything. And I'm like, absolutely. And I remember you were like, I'll pay you with like, you know, dinner and beer. <laughs> and I was like, sold. And then and then all of a sudden you stopped I don't know, like... bringing dinner and beer and I didn't mind. <laughs> oh. Because I was just that like. A, yeah. That's how you know it's real. Yeah. yeah. That's a, well, that and then about a month later we had a full length album fully demoed yep. like guitars, lead guitars bass like program drum, like every production on it there's pianos and yeah damn it was a lot of, it, was it was a lot, lot of fun a lot it, of fun it, it got more than that because when i came in after like the first rehearsal the guys look at me and go like oh yeah we got like four hours of material now yeah. Uh, oh yeah yeah well, tyler <laughs> did tyler tyler was like i'm just gonna start writing some songs and then you never like stopped well so th- we did we wrote like a full-length album yeah and me and Alan played an acoustic show at a uh, apartment building that my friend was managing at the time. And it had nice. like this a kind very of like big a, gig, like a event room or whatever. And uh, we played that, and then like two days later, the sh- the world shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, okay, well, it's no, there's no point in trying to find other yeah. musicians yet because oh, what shit. are we gonna do? And then I had all the time in the world, and I was like, oh, okay, here's... The next thing I wrote was actually the Good Night Man EP. We are like, well... So you just wrote that that So the first full length's never been released? Or the second full length or third, (laughs) or the other three EPs. (laughs) Yeah, full on saga. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it's a a saga at this point, but... uh, I did feel like at that time we'd kind of... With that first kind of album worth of material, we kind of like the wheels got turning, and we're like, okay, we got we got a good groove going, and that was what kind of made the material for Good Night Man uh, EP to be like you know a five song chunk of stuff yeah. that was like, yeah, like this 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 yeah. is good. Also, we also didn't want to release like twelve songs 
right. at the same time out into the world. Well, it's kind of weird we nowadays. We couldn't do anything. Like, because of how people just, like, take music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people, like, I think Muse even said, like, they're even thinking about not doing albums anymore. They're thinking about just releasing singles every because so of hip-hop. Often. That's what I've been... That's, that might be a big influence on it, too. But, like, you know, um, somebody I really just kind of despise but <laughs> have to uh, respect at the same time as the CEO of Spotify because he flat out kind of just told artists, you just need to put out more content. Mm. If you want to make more money, you got to mm. put out more content. And you got to do it more frequently. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think that's kind of it, it's a yes and no because when you put out like a full length or something like that, that is you know it's you're putting out art uh, out there and it's vulnerable because it's something that's a part of you. It's a collection yeah. that this collection goes together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or this EP collection goes together. But that's also for ba- more for bands. Probably. It is. And I don't even know if pop does that or like. Pop's been doing. I mean, they did that for years. You know, like, but do do pop albums have like a flow to them, or are they just like single after single, just like it just hip-hop? depends like, I feel on like... the artist. I think. Yeah. You know, there's. I mean, it just depends on the artist and if, if they wrote the music or not. It's always going to be easier to market a single, and that so too. from like yeah. a, a record label standpoint, if you've got a a banger that they can just pump the airwaves with, that's way easier than a twelve song collection from someone that people might not be familiar sure. with well, yet. And one thing a lot of bands are doing, it used to be you would say that you have an album coming out, right? and then there'd be one single leading up to mm-hmm. the release. Now most of the time, you know, if you have 10 songs on an album, like five like of seven <laughs> of them are singles, you're just slowly <laughs> releasing it until at the end you're like, here's the collection. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is kind of the best of both worlds where – but at the same time, like for me, when I'm looking at a Spotify or Apple Music interface and I've just got a thousand singles and I can't just like press play and stop, you got to go and change albums. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's like my biggest knock on it, which is why I'm always an album guy instead of a, I get annoyed with singles. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, when that first started, it was re- that annoying concept of like, oh, gotta go back, go to the next one, go, go back. But they, Apple Music's done a really good job of doing like, you know, they have the pre-order or pre-release or mm-hmm. pre-save of an album and they just release and they the just song release them within yeah, that yeah, album yeah. at a time, which makes more sense. 100%. You know? But I don't know. There, There's the idea like, you know, in our, our generation where like- What is your generation? I don't know. What are we? Gen X? I don't know. It's the millennial or whatever. Scan the fuck it CDs is. at how, Sam how, Goody. How old generation. are you? Guys? Yeah, we're the we're the scanning <laughs> CDs generation. We're all in our early twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you think I would hate to be like you know get off my lawn, but like there's the whole idea of like you know you don't try to sneak uh, a peek at presents kind of thing, you know, peeking at Christmas presents yeah. kind of thing, and I feel yeah. like. The more songs you release before the whole entire album comes out, it just kind of ruins the entire record for you too, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because one of my favorite things to look for is when a record comes out or I discover a record is like the deep cuts. Yeah. Like the songs that really don't get the love and affection like the singles do. You know, I feel like a badass when you listen to those songs. You're like, oh, oh yeah. I know something you don't know. Fucking love these songs. <laughs> Nobody like you know that, that I I call those guys true and on because those <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, they're the ones that are like I only listen to the first four Metallica records <laughs> when they enter Sandman came out. Fuck them. You know that I hate those guys. <laughs> so what music do you guys listen to? Is it? So what? first of all, I described your music as I just said Nightmare on Elm Street. That's not really a genre. It's just a. Feeling. That's a new genre. We're, we just started <laughs> yeah. the Nightmare on Elm Street. Genre, that is right? absolutely what we're gonna brand our music as. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Cougar core. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I personally, like I said, I'm an I'm an old school emo kid. Like I still listen to Taking Back Sunday and Coheed and Cambria, The Used, all that stuff, and huge Iron Maiden fan. So kind of the '80s okay. hair metal stuff, which. On the recordings, there's actually a lot of times where there's, on the recording, like, five guitars going at the yeah, same time. Yeah, it's so harmonized. fucking sick. <laughs> those harmonizing guitar lines are... Yeah. And then we get to playing them live, and I'm like, which one are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the octave pedal. Yeah, which know? of these makes sense, but... um, 
yeah, for me, I don't know. Once once we got past, and this is probably what every generation says, but once we got past the early two thousands, I feel like music got too uh, too boring, and that there wasn't creative mm. background to it. it. Was like, here's a beat and a cool singer we can market, and maybe it's got a good hook, and that's it. it doesn't feel anything. Um, I still like stuff where you go see it live, and it feels like it's punching you in the chest, and yeah, you're in a room with a bunch of people <laughs> into the same thing, and I mean, one of my my favorite memories, uh, Coheed and Cambry is my favorite band. Saw them live at the Showbox, and there's a line in the song where they yell, man, you're, you're jackhammer. And there's like a thousand people in the room just screaming it at the same time. Yeah. Like, you can't get that in other stuff. Like, yeah. you don't go to a rave and feel that way or <laughs> or whatever. Like, Unless you're high. Everybody goes. Oh, I'm high. <laughs> yeah. You might think you're actually on a jackhammer. Yeah, at you a, think you're on a jackhammer a, getting yeah. nailed by a jackhammer while the beat's yeah. hitting you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You get the whole room at the favorite part just going like, boom, 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 boom. Here comes exactly. the drop. Yep. <laughs> but for me, there's still something like, that was kind of still the last era of bands that played instruments. Mm. Oh, like so, everything's now is just like oh, digital. Oh, so digital. And, even even, even so with bands, bands. Even, okay. even with yeah. bands and instruments. I mean, like, like you got so much. 21 Pilots. Yeah. I mean. They're well, a band? I don't even I mean, I don't even when think you of them see them band. live, they have a lot of you know musicians up on stage doing things but i mean like there's some bands where it's like a three piece and they don't have you know auxiliary musicians on stage they just have computers and click tracks and stuff like that going on i mean it's cool if you want to like implement certain things that you can't replicate live like orchestrations and that kind of thing but like one of the best things i heard from like an audio teacher back in the day when i was in high school is if you can't do it live, don't fucking record it. <laughs> that and I was like, wow, that kind of makes sense. But yeah. the more you evolve in your sound or the things that you can layer and do and make cool, it's worth exploring as an artist. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. I think um, even like I've been trying to get more into DJing, so I've been DJing with my friends, and then like they're like, oh, you just press the sync button. But like I worked at ninety two point five when I was around DJs and like I had some mentors and they'd be like, mm-hmm. never use the sync button. So I, I just feel like people are just or like when you like even with the um like hip hop artists they have like a track behind them or a pop artist just a track. Yeah. Like I, I hate that shit. Like plus you don't really know what you're doing at that point. Like mm-hmm. it it can be like annoying to do analog stuff, but I feel like you understand what you're doing more and like you have more respect of your craft. Like how can you expect yeah. how can you respect your own craft if you don't even know have the shit that's going into it. Oh, for and sure. And I get it, because you, you still want to like be able to put on a good show. Yeah. And if like your audience and your fans are expecting sounds to be coming out of the speakers for certain things, like you still, I get why people want to deliver that. Um, but uh, there is something to be said where everyone's on stage doing their part to to push all the air. There's a really funny line. Uh, it's. Uh, like the first song off of a Skrillex album, <laughs> and uh, at the <laughs> we're, just, we're just shit talking like all this like electronic Sorry, shit everyone. like at the beginning, and all of a sudden there's the first line of a Skrillex. Lo- well, at, at the end of the song, it gets done, and I don't even know who the voice is, but he's like, "They're not artists. Nobody can play the guitar." <laughs> I was like. It's yeah, kind of how I feel right. about it. <laughs> so what He's music do you listen to, Jay? What do I listen? I listen to a <laughs> lot of different shit. Um, so, like, my all-time favorite band is Metallica. Like, I obsess over that fucking band. Um, but that's just because it's one of those bands that, like, yeah, they hit the mainstream, but they evolved their sound and just tried everything that they could to further themselves as artists but somehow they stayed like as the biggest fucking band in the world while (laughs) doing it which you don't ever fucking see you know despite snare drums it's just yeah snare (laughs) drums but also they like they hit the mainstream on their fifth album you know what i mean so they like they worked their asses off getting to it but other things that i listened to like when i got into being in bands Metalcore was the huge thing at the time in the two th- mid two thousands. Can you describe what metalcore metalcore is? Like bands like Kill Switch Engage, As Are They Dying. Um, what does it mean to be metal? 
just really heavy, really riffs, heavy guitar riffs, riffs usually, chunky or, guitar mm-hmm. tones. Usually you know? double bass pedals on yeah. the drums, and... and then you mix that with hardcore music, like hardcore punk, you know, and just um, bands like Evergreen Terrace, you know. And then I got into a lot of the melodic hardcore metalcore stuff, like It Prevails, um, Ghost Inside, stuff that had a lot of melody to it, but was still fucking heavy. Um, can you just be like a guy that drives to their nine to five job listening to this? Or oh yeah, do I was doing it for years, you know. And what does it mean? Though, I was the if only you're listening to this. Does this mean you're like an edgy, no person if you're listening to I metal? Think, I think it's just an outlet, you know, because all of us have different ways of getting through. Like I was an angry kid, kind of growing up, and dealt with. I got bullied a lot, you yeah. know. I got made fun of like a shit ton because you were bald or. <laughs> yeah, I was bald at three. Um, no, it because never came I, was, in. I was fucking fat. Like, I was the biggest kid in my school years. I mean, like, I was over 200 pounds in fifth grade. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, and I was tall and just, I was just an easy target. Yeah. And so, like, you're just made fun of all the time. And um, you just just want to find something that relates to you. And that's all it could relate to me at the time. And, I mean... I grew up listening to like classic rock and stuff like that because my dad and uh, Rush was like my big thing growing up. I didn't really get into like Metallica or Iron Maiden until like I was able to buy my own CDs, you Mm. know? And uh, then over time, like when I got into college, I was working at a college radio station there. So I got more into like other styles. What college did you go to? uh, Green River. Okay. College. Did the radio program there. And, uh, I learned about like all sorts of like underground stuff there, you know, Shout out to KGRG. Yeah, KGRG. Um, psychobilly, uh, punk music. I got really into progressive rock and progressive metal. And so that was a big thing for me. Um, but just playing in different bands and experimenting with different musics, like even getting into like acoustic singer songwriter folk music and stuff like that um i ended up working at a country radio station for a few years and uh tra- meeting artists was cool because you find out who the guys who are actually writing their own music or writing other people's music and then just mm-hmm. like grasp it and just talking with them about their influences and how many metalheads are in country music was kind <laughs> of pretty cool to see um so, but also just meeting just like the biggest fucking asshats like in country music. I had one instance. Uh, I'm okay to talk about this, but <laughs> so <laughs> I've said I've st- I'm on I'm working for a morning show on a country radio station, and it's like the hottest day of the year that in summer Seattle. in Seattle. We were at White River Amphitheater down in Auburn for Toby Keith and uh, Trace Adkins and James Otto. And so we were there, big fucking show. It was the hottest day of the year. I'm, we've been just outside trying to give water bottles out to people, just giving away free shit and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden the host comes up and he goes, hey, man, we got to go interview Toby. Oh. I'm like, okay. And I'm already burnt the fuck out, right? And I ended up getting heat stroke. Oh, and God. I'm sitting on Toby Keith's tour bus, and I got one of those little flip video cameras, right? the little ones with the USB port in there and I'm down like on my knees looking up but just getting the camera angle these guys are super tall like Toby Keith I think is like 6'5 and the host I was working oh, with wow. was 6'7 and you're a tall guy though too I'm 6'3 so Toby Keith is just fucking out there he's probably high drunk <laughs> just fucking just out of his mind right now He's got a whole lip of chew while he's talking on like, rah, 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 rah. and he dead stops. He dead stops. He just like he's talking, he's talking, talking. He dead stops, looks at me in the camera, and goes, "Hey man, you want to see my wiener?" <laughs> <laughs> and I go, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and everybody in the bus is laughing. I'm like about to pass out because of the fucking heat stroke right now. I was. I looked at him. The only thing I said to him right away was like, "I don't think it'd be okay with me getting that much TMZ money." And he laughed his fucking ass off right there. But that was the weirdest thing that ever happened. Like meeting a country superstar, or music, or celebrity, or whatever. <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> going fuck we went so anyway metallica tangent. metallica uh, <laughs> um so yeah i mean like musically Nas i podcast. just i just try to grasp onto anything that sounds good i don't fucking try to gatekeep you know the music i listen to or try to like have boundaries of what i listen to or anything if it fucking sounds good to me it sounds good to me yeah you know that's just my mentality i'm just tired of like when I was like really into like hardcore at the time and I'd be around a little like the hardcore kids like in Tacoma and stuff like that at the time, it was just like very elitist gatekeeping mm. kind of like mentality. Um, and it's just kind of really weird, you know? So I just told myself, I don't want to be like that. Don't want to ever be like that. Yeah. So I just wanted to, and it's fine. It's fun. It's all awesome to listen to just any music that just like opens up your mind. There's a guy that calls himself that one guy. Ooh. It's that number one guy. And he created his instrument. It's like a bunch of pipes connected into it and it's got triggers and shit. And it, it's connected <laughs> to a computer and he just slaps it in sequences with like a kick drum and he just makes music with it. And it's fucking awesome. That's crazy. You know? But is this one of your the meme channels you follow or no? It's <laughs> legit artist. He just played at Numos, I think, like oh, a couple shit. weeks ago. Yeah, he headlines Numos. Does he need an opener? Man, I wish we could do it. <laughs> Good night, man. <clears throat> but I last time I saw him was at Numos, and there was a guy who's a so you saw boxer. him live. I've seen him live many oh, times. That must be crazy. So the last time I saw him live, he had a guy who opened up for him who his name was Heatbox, and. <laughs> he beatboxed the that's his whole thing is he beatboxes his all of his music and then he layers parts of his beatboxing on a loop pedal a giant loop pedal and then sings over it and it's fucking amazing oh shit guys not anywhere doing anything right now though i haven't <laughs> seen anything from them but i bought that first record he put out it was an amazing record so but that's the that's the kind of shit i'm into if it if it sounds good to my ear i fucking listen to it there we go what about you, Alan? <laughs> um, if I got to go with like favorite bands, um, I really like a good live show. Um, Every Time I Die is a hardcore band out oh, fuck of yeah. uh, fuck out yeah. of Buffalo. Um, I Buffalo, New York. Yep, hey. and they will um, no Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love that. They're the house band. <laughs> Even better. Um, <laughs> I uh, I like crowd surfed for the first time in like 15 years. Last time they came to town, and so it was. Wait, just, you crowd yep, surf? Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was like, it's gonna, and I'll be right there in the middle of the pit, screaming along to every word. Got you doing, a crowd surf retirement yeah, there, dude. Was that all, the tour with Taking Back Sunday? No, that was when they were with Mastodon and uh, Coheed and Cambria. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah, the Mary Mart. Yeah, the Mar yeah. yeah. And I was all day. I was at work being like. I just got to get there in time. I can't miss every time I die because they were like the opener band for the day. And I was like, are they going to play right at doors or are we going to get a half hour? And I was just stressing all day that I had to get there in time. But oh, it was a blast. So I loved them. Um, there was one of my all time favorite bands um, kind of along the same lines of I love just the energy of the live show. Um Back in the day, out of Bremerton, there was this band called Kane Hotter. Fucking that, love that band. Oh, they were so good. And I remember I was living over in eastern Washington at the time in the little, like, neighborhood venue. And they came to town with Schoolyard Heroes. Uh, and I'd heard Schoolyard Heroes <clears throat> here. I'd heard Schoolyard Heroes before, so I knew what to expect. But then these dudes get on stage, and they look like guys that you'd run into at, like, a comic store. Or, like, <laughs> oh, at yeah. your local <laughs> arcade. Just kind of... Well, that's probably Every, where they hung out. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of uh, unpresuming, uh, a little nerdy-looking guys, and then the music takes off, and the singer is running back and forth on the stage. Everyone's jumping up and down, just giving it, like, a million percent. Um, and it was just the best. It was the heyday of all-ages shows yeah. back hey. in that day, mm -hmm. where they're – Still, uh, it was like MySpace was the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I said uh, we were in our early 20s. I might have been lying. 
That, um, that's dating us now. Yeah. Is MySpace is <laughs> yeah. actually well, well, dating us. Maybe mid to late 20s. Yeah, mid to late 20s tops. <laughs> but, you know, and that was like the stuff that you do, that you and your friends would do, is go see the band that's playing that weekend. Yeah. And yeah. so that it had, we, there was this really good all ages live music scene at that time and they were right in the middle of it and i was the like self-appointed street team for uh, tri cities <laughs> whenever they were coming into town i would just make flyers and just like hand them out at high school just because oh, i loved them so much when did you so, move over here uh oh seven okay and so i got oh. to see them a few times uh when i moved to seattle and so you're originally from tri cities tri cities yep and so uh and, you know, I, I went to go see Kane Hodder the first chance I had. And they were just like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? I live here now. Like they upgraded me to the Seattle Street team. Let's yeah, go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm even on one of their podcasts. If you dig way back into the Kane wow, Hodder archive, wow. there is a podcast that uh, I opened up the for them one time. I remember you saying that. Yeah, that it was, was Columbia City Theater oh. in 2008. And it was I was I felt. I, I I really liked them and I was really stoked that we got that show. But what I felt you bad in? for him. It was called Before I Die. And the show that it was put together by a clothing company we're all sponsored by. Oh shit. But I don't think Kane Hodder was. Mm -hmm. Um because we they got put on the show like last minute. And I felt bad because like And they're not still nobody, around anymore. Nobody nobody stuck or, stuck around for them at all. Oh. And there was like only ten of us in the actual venue when it was like 120 people before that. And I, was, I walked outside to have a smoke and everybody's outside. I'm like, what's going on here? And I go inside and I'm like, oh fuck, everybody left. And oh, that's such a bummer. Yeah, it was a bummer. But uh, was it Gordon from College Radio was in another band that's playing that same show too. <laughs> oh, funny. That was funny, yeah, I forgot about that. What level of artist do you have to be to perform at Columbia City? <sighs> I, don't I mean, know. we're here right now. I mean, we're here. <laughs> but like, <laughs> where that? Where is that? Is that like the same type as? Like Honestly, I don't even kinda, know or? how we got that gig. Besides the clothing well, company that, we're on, and that was still back in the day where that like all ages music scene was yeah. pretty thriving. And so venues like that and like the showbox market would oh, just yeah. put together local lineups because because mm. and because they'd fill the house. Well, yeah, the Trey from Epidemic was running like he would either have the pop punk emo nights or the metal nights at the show box just to fill in dates because they didn't have that big deal at the time with AEG. AEG wasn't there. Mm. And so we played, I played the show box seven times within two years because of that guy, Damn. because they were just trying to fill in dates. Yeah. The second time we played at the show box, we headlined it because we brought that many kids the first time, but not as many kids came the second time <laughs> we played it. That was the saddest part is when they started doing those shows. Oh, it was. And all of a sudden the turnout was like a third of what yeah. it had been just six months earlier. The and funnier it was like, part was like, what happened? Trey gets, so Showbox bought Soto. This was years ago before the Soto grew into what There's it is now. There's two show boxes in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For people so listening. This, the second one was used to be the Phoenix, and before that was the Premier. And so Showbox bought it, and they were renovating it and everything. And then we get a we get a we get a call from this guy Trey, who was running that production company at the market, and he goes, "Hey, do you guys want to play the first show at the Soto?" And I'm like, "Oh Ooh. fuck yeah, we do." What he didn't tell us is going to be at the bar. <laughs> and we're all like so the band that we put we booked the show and everything and we had no idea till day of show that it was at the bar and two bands that we had play with us were all under 21 uh. so we had to figure out a way for them to get in and out as fast as possible and <laughs> mustaches one our, and one of our members yep. <laughs> was underage too and so was, and we were like promoting it Nobody could fucking come in that we invited. <laughs> so the only people that watched the show were the staff, my parents, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> private show, in right? Private my, show. My kid's playing the show box. I'm going to go see him. I'm going to go see him. I'm proud of that kid. <laughs> go back to school, you know? <laughs> so what do you mean by like all ages thing like that's not a thing anymore well it's you? not as much of a thing and uh where venue, damn youtube where venues could do an all ages <laughs> show and make enough money where they where it'd be worth it whereas a lot of venues 
depend upon the sale of alcohol during uh, such yeah. shows. Mm-hmm. And a, when you do an all ages show, there's a several other kind of steps that you have to have adequate security and barriers because there is going to be a bar but if you're going to be drinking you got to be here Mm -hmm. there's got to be a system for that there has to be designated areas that's 21 so they're saving way more money so it's way easier to just slap a 21 and over tag on the show and just have the whole place be open for it was so great when soto switched that you could take alcohol out into the main floor. Yes, you can now <laughs> take your beer out onto the main Everywhere floor. Everywhere the beer was standing 500 feet away from the stage. <laughs> yeah. While the underage people were enjoying the show, and then finally <laughs> they flipped it. And yeah. Yeah, as you long as you, their... you can't do it with hard liquor. Right. But if, if you just got a beer, yeah, they'll give you a bracelet. A and they will, I, have, I, I know people who are like, Oh, I'll just go grab us some beers. You wait here, and they were kicked out of that show in mm. oh, minutes. Yeah. yeah, they would. <laughs> they would. Yeah, they uh, top notch security you'd staff think, there. Yeah, you'd think that this is their job. I watched that happen. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking uh, Alexis on fire. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that happen like right in front of me and kicked yeah. out. All Instantly. all parties involved now get, get to listen out. from the sidewalk. <laughs> and yep. you, you guys just performed. Was it last week? Yep, for yep. Uh, last Friday. Last Friday. Yeah. Yep. Was that one of your first shows since the pandemic? or? Yep, show number two. Yeah, first one uh, with uh, <laughs> with Aaron on drums. Yep, so our very first show we played at uh, Bad Jimmy's Brewery in Ballard. Uh, they have a big parking lot, beer garden, things so we did an outdoor show. They also uh, have a really nice restaurant next door that had no idea about the show. Oh, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Best fried chicken in Seattle. Oh hell yeah! Really? Ba- basically, they, oh yeah. Basically, we worked it out where all the bands had to shout out saying like, "Please go buy food so we can do this." Yeah. <laughs> As everyone was already buying S- food. St. We're, Hooligans. Yeah. Such a good restaurant. I've never so heard good. of it. I need to check it's it out. So good. Oh, it's so good. But uh, I want to start like a a YouTube channel where I try out different restaurants if I don't know many yet. Uh, so Instagram, <laughs> Instagram number four. There you <laughs> yes. go. There you but, go. But uh, so the first show. Uh, it was the three of us mm-hmm. and uh, our buddy who was going to play drums couldn't make it. And so we played with a f- <laughs> fake program drums tracks just coming through the PA. <laughs> Shout out to SoCal Kyle. SoCal from, Kyle. From, from real uh, MVP. Logic. <laughs> uh, so I have like our set list, uh, just the drum tracks on my phone That's ready smart. to go. Uh, still, because I was just like, "All right, here's what we can do." And it's yeah. from the Good Night Man EP. Or? Yeah, well, it's uh, we play songs from our in our 130 song catalog. <laughs> yeah, I oh, so you play unreleased songs? Yep. Yeah, we kind of just went through and we're like, "What would be the? What are the our favorites?" Finally, getting to go out and do stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple songs from the EP yeah, are we'll on, still... on that that playlist, but uh, so. Um, played with the fake drummer the first one and then we had booked the show last week first like earlier this year and he wasn't in uh, no. Jay wasn't in the uh, the mix yet and so we brought his buddy Aaron in shout out to Aaron again and he was going to play drums so now we had a real drummer but Jay couldn't play I couldn't play it so we played our second show in a row as a three piece <laughs> so one of these days all four of us We'll be on stage at the same time. We just got to wait for the planets to align. Yeah. And it's yeah. going to be such a good show. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so weird. We should really try to get on that Everclear show. <laughs> oh, I know. Everclear is coming to see us? At El Corazon. Yeah. With Weedus. With Weedus. El Corazon. I just want to hear that song. November. November. Yeah. yeah, like El Corazon, oh. need a local opener. Yeah, yeah, we're here. You got us. I mean, we're yep. probably going to be the heaviest thing there. But I know. I oh, still think sure. those okay. 90 alt rock fans would still eat it up. Totally. See, yeah. the bands I listen to are like late '90s, early 2000s. So, like, Everclear is like my favorite band right now, and everyone's like, that, well, "That's like 20 guys, years ago." One yeah. of the guys lives in Snoqualmie, I think, because really? they're yeah. from Portland. Yeah, I don't know if I knew this. Yeah, yeah, so he were he was doing lessons out of a shop in Bellevue for a while. I should reach out to this. The guy. more you know, but uh, that shop no but, more. But yeah, uh, we played at the Fun House last week. Was um, it fun? It was, it was Wait, a lot of they fun. took out a, what venue? They took out a venue there. I thought they took out the fun house, or did they take well, out? So it the, used no, no, no. to be a standalone uh, down kind of near where the Space Needle is. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. now it's it's like the smaller venue attached to El Corazon. Yeah. I thought they shut down El Corazon, or did they? Sh- I thought they shut down one of those two. No, no they, over the pandemic. No, they well they didn't do well, shows. They shut, well, they shut down all the shows. Yeah, all yeah. The yeah. right. But I thought <laughs> one the of them under well, El Corazon's building got bought, and there had 
been a rumor it was going to get shut down until uh, they redid that building, and then all of a sudden, shows started popping up again. So I don't know what's going on yeah. in that. But yeah, we played the the small stage um, or the smaller side, and uh, great lineup, very different bands through the whole thing, which mm-hmm. was kind of cool. Yeah, that was a good night. There was a uh, Dredge, another Seattle band, much more hardcore than us, and then still uh, you haven't described what sound you guys are like. You're not fuck. You're not pop punk. I mean, or, yeah, uh, you got elements pop of pop punk, post hardcore. See, what is mm-hmm. post? Like, is there a pre? So, yeah, okay. <laughs> hardcore in its origin was like an offshoot of punk, where it was yeah. like really fast, really aggressive, and then kind of the post hardcore was like taking elements from that uh, and kind of the 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 aggression and the vibe, but bringing more melodic elements into yeah. it. Stuff you could sing yeah, along so, to. Like, the catchy no. chorus. Uh, it's pop hardcore. Yeah. And so okay. it's just it's more a little more accessible and uh you know the catchy chorus being probably the most notable thing as opposed to just yeah. screaming through mm-hmm. the whole it's the whole song. So you guys can like hear any band and understand like what genre it is at this point. We'll at least have back and forth discussions about yeah, what we'll, we're educated hearing. guesses. We're, we'll label them to what we feel is like them, you yeah. know, like when I heard when I heard the songs for like the first time, I'm like, okay, I hear a lot of Freddy Krueger, <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Krueger, uh, Jason, Jason, <laughs> in the background, you know, just. We're gonna start a song with that. I know, next right? Time for sure. Um, and then I would hear like uh, elements of like Foo Fighters, you know, mm-hmm. just like even just like straightforward like radio rock kind of stuff, but like it wasn't so generic. You know yeah. what I mean? I love the layering more than anything else. I think that's what captured me the most was like, first off, it was like, when I was, when I first heard these songs, I was like, okay, there's a real singer in this band. Yeah. Um, I've been in so many bands where like, there wasn't really any good, like, clean vocals. You know what I mean? Like, you either have like all the heavy vocals trying to like, you know, carry, be Atlas and carry the whole band. And then you got like a mediocre, clean vocalist, like, you know, doing something melodic just to have it there. But like when these songs were given to me, I was like, oh man, I fuck with this. You know, I love this. You're making him blush over here. Good. (laughs) You can tell through the beard. (laughs) And and that was kind of when, when I started writing a lot of this stuff, that was kind of the goal was tapping into stuff that I know that my friend, like if my friends don't listen to the genre, could they still sing along Yeah, in some regard to it? And then secondly, other musicians that are sitting there, they're going to mm-hmm. be like, well, that's cool guitar riffs or like musical parts of the song and trying to put it all in there where it's like a heavier crowd will like it. Yeah. A popular crowd will like it. You know, if you heard the whole catalog, you know, if we we're playing like a, metal show we could pick pick a a set list out of the songs that would kind of fit in or mm-hmm. if it was more of a poppy show or something slower even an acoustic show there's like there's a bunch yeah on stuff that you guys will hear sometime between now and the end of time um <laughs> that's a long time piano based songs and acoustic guitar but like it's just kind of a little bit of everything mm-hmm. um which i think also helps in my opinion separate from a lot of the other bands where every song's not the same same exact, you know, it's not in it's, your face the whole time, or it's not subdued the whole dude, time. It's fucking like, beautiful. It's, like, it's probably, it's yeah, probably one yeah. of my favorite albums right now, honestly. Like oh, it's literally thanks. like a, it's like a, in my opinion, it's like a masterpiece. It's very cinematic, it's a, it's and a, I've it's enjoyed it. Masterpiece EP. That's it's, masterpiece. Get rid. Okay, it's not gonna be called Goodnight Man EP anymore. <laughs> no. It's the masterpiece EP. Like I feel like such a bad out because I like my drive through the woods. I have to drive through the woods to get to my house. It's like a 15, 20 minute drive. So. I know where you live. So I have to. <laughs> I saw the Good Night Man in my window last night. So was, actually, uh, so I listen to that shit driving home at nighttime, and I feel like such a badass, like I'm in a movie. That's that's the absolute best time to listen to this music. Is it that is. Night. Uh, the band name Avenue East actually came from the street outside of Snohomish High School. Oh, I was going to watch my nephew play football there, and uh, I was on the phone with my mom, and she's like. The high school's on Avenue East, and I was like, what Avenue? Because usually it's like yeah, yeah, First yeah. Avenue East or Second, yeah. whatever. And she just kept saying it over and over and was like, what number? She's like, no, the street is literally just called Avenue, Avenue East. East. 
and uh, I was with my ex at the time. We were like, that'd be, that'd be kind of a cool band name. And so when this started coming to fruition, yeah. I threw that out and we we're like, if you could, I could not believe no one else had dibs on Avenue yeah, East there's, either. There's like I one band surprised. somewhere. There's like one band <laughs> somewhere that's called like East Avenue. There's like East Avenue Band, or oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, or some like yeah. really close. But or an, yeah. I think there's an apartment building called East Avenue. As yeah, well. but uh, yeah, we started like googling it and mm-hmm. searching for it. No Avenue East, and so I was like, oh, thanks, Nahomish High School. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's bad. Thanks for being on a weird street name. I didn't know that. And so then with the whole concept, we actually. Uh, Avenue East is like a place within the story through all, through all the music. So. Reoccurring Elm locale. Street. Yeah. It actually, in, <laughs> in the song Good Night Man, uh, the words Avenue East show up in the lyrics. Yeah, so. it's our little DJ Khaled moment. Yeah. <laughs> Avenue East. Yep. Another one. <laughs> it's like Akon. We have to sing Akon. Young in every Jesus. song. Yeah. Trying to take so can you, we keep just talking about Good Night Man, but people are gonna be like, "What the fuck is?" Can you explain to the audience what Good Night Man is? So it's a five song EP. Good Night Man is released in twenty twenty. Released in twenty twenty, pandemic style. Me and him actually never once got together during the recording of done this one entirely remotely. I managed wow. to finally, after like a million years, get a. Uh, recording setup at my place so we could just email each other yeah yeah did you um, mix and master yourself or you sent it out to someone or how did that work alan tyler would uh basically record the, stuff his parts <laughs> and his vocals and his guitars and send it over to me i would do my bass part and do all the production style Holy of it shit. and so um i was kind of the engineer and producer on it while tyler was the primary his, song cr- his credit list on the album's this long and then it's just like singer <laughs> Tyler, over here, but, uh, <laughs> uh, so Good Night Man is the main bad guy in the story, and so the five song EP is just a quick glimpse on how he became Good Night Man origin story. The origin, yeah, yeah. So all of all of the EPs that have not been released yet are all based on characters. So there's a, a EP about the good guys and uh, an EP kind of about. Um, the council of the middle, like yeah, the like the the governing body of this um, planet, and then uh, another one that's kind of like the aftermath of what happened to everybody after this war happens, and um, and then the full length albums are actually the tale of said war. Yeah. Uh, so oh, shit. if so you, you listen to them in their entirety, like the whole catalog, it'll tell a story of characters and. And all that stuff, but uh, you're going to release that, right? Or how, what is your goals for? We'll like, get around to it. Yeah, I mean, they're a, they're literally all demoed and recorded. It's it's just a matter it's of a matter polishing of them up, polishing and... them, and getting these guys, uh, Jay and Aaron, on them. And uh, yeah, and actually, you have a lot, Alan, of uh, songs to catch up on. Too. Yeah, true. Yeah, so well, I'm excited. Got, I'm do you write excited. it as a book then, or do you write it as like an? You're just writing them as songs, or like. When you're um, writing these, how are you feeling? Like, what are I kind of I have a story, like a storyline written out. So theoretically, in a way, it it could be read as a book. Like, if you put all the lyrics together, you could read it that way. But um, it's definitely structured in a in a story. Like each song has a different character or part of the the story that that song specifically about. And I think so did you already have like just like an outline of the story and then you just wrote songs and just put things together with them or cause uh, I, yeah. this, I'm learning this for the first time. So. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the band. Yeah. yeah uh, welcome to the band. Uh, yeah. The, the, the story of the, the war happened first. And then as I kept writing song after song, after like, song, I need more stuff to write about. Yeah. The character stuff started coming. So there, there was a general outline for the story mm-hmm. and then, um, all the characters were in the story, and then it was like, "Cool, well, Good Night Man's kind of edgy. Let's do a little bit like heavier album because he's the bad guy and mm-hmm. the Freddy Krueger and yeah." Um, and so then like the good guy story because it's good guy. It's a little like poppier and more uh, upbeat until somebody dies. But uh, bum, bum, bum. spoiler alert. Um, so is this something you've been thinking about for like a while, or is this just something you just randomly thought of during the? Um, like are these characters that you've had since like a child? Or no, no. 
and actually the the stories it's it's not that like expansive as a, like <laughs> the story's literally been told a billion times probably like good versus bad and and war but uh kind of as the songwriting happened with the outline and be like okay this song uh the bullet point is something really aggressive happened and so then that would trigger like okay i'm going to play a little bit more of a metal riff thing mm-hmm. on it or uh hey, something fun happened and, you know, what are some brighter chords to throw on? So it was really fun to write under that uh, that concept where it was almost like a cheat code where I didn't have to try to plug stuff in. It was just like, oh, cool, that's a heavy heavy riff. Um, here's the thing. Oh, that's a heavy song. This song is going to be about whatever. Yeah, and, uh, you kind of work it into the outline. And yeah, then... and so then when you already have that part of the story, the lyrics um, – come pretty easy because you're you kind of already have this video in your head of what happened on in that part of the song and so then you're just describing what happened but wait so do jay and alan write with you at all or do you like lay out all the instruments i'm the fucking new guy (laughs) (laughs) wait officially so how long have you officially been with the group now two months three months and you're the one who reached out though (laughs) no 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 no. they re uh alan originally asked the band or asked me to see if the band I was helping out with at the time, Fine Forever, which is the band that Aaron was leading, could open up the show at Bad Jimmy's Brewery. And at first we said yes. And then the drummer in that band basically became a problem. <laughs> but um but he was dealing with some home shit. So um I I had to break the news to Alan. Hey, we're not going to be able to do this. Our drummer is kind of, you know, we, we're having drummer issues. Uh, we can't do it. And then Alan said to me, well, do you want to play guitar for us instead? And so I was like, uh, fuck. Yeah. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> wow. It feels like you guys have been together for a while. Though. It was like, honestly you have like a really, you guys have a, just a, a cool energy and connection about you guys. Today. It's worked well. And honestly, after that first practice, Tyler and I were like, is Jay going to stick around? Cause I think we're both cool with this. Yeah. Like, like it, I think during the first practice, I even asked like, Hey, is there any future stuff going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> I really like yeah. what you guys and are we're, doing. Cause I remember texting you right beforehand. We were like, do we wait till after this first show and then get a feel for if he wants to be in this? And then it was pretty quick after the, the first one where it was like, no, this feels was like, yeah. If you want to stick around, yeah, you got it. This is this is working well. And same thing with with Aaron. Um, oh, so so, so do, we, do we want to just make a decision right here on the podcast, Aaron? Like, if you're listening, <laughs> I mean, he's already because he's already he, tracking drums so, on. So I fixed this. <laughs> I fixed this truck. Um, so he owes you. <laughs> well, no, I fixed his truck. Um, and he when he came to pick up his truck today, he goes, uh, um, "I'm not stepping on your toes or anything like that." With doing the drumming and stuff like no, 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 man, it's probably they probably love it. You know, that's that's the way you got to get in. You know that if you want to get show that initiative, if you want that (laughs) gig, just fucking do it. He's like, yeah, you're right. Are you are you you gonna talk to the guys about it? I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to them tonight. Yeah, we're gonna talk right here on this podcast. Right now on this podcast. Well, so (laughs) so after after the first show, yeah, we had the one this last week booked, uh, almost a month to the day out, and we were like. Oh, I remember that too. We're like, are we going to do a second show with no drummer? And then we're like, we can't book anything else. Like, we got to figure. We got to figure this out. We do. Well, anything. you guys already had like three shows booked. When yeah, what, I, when I was in there, and the yeah, one of them, one of them up, fell through. Yeah. Fell through. And then how Thanks do you guys lot, book Noah. shows? Like, are you? Do you guys know people who are in the music scene, or like, how do you guys? Yes, and that? we often it's as a a friend from another band we know is like, or some someone yeah in some band is working with the venue to put a show together. Is that how it happens for most bands? Oh, it's a it's especially a lot locally. Of it. Yeah. 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 I mean where, like also yeah. That's awesome though. We're you like know, yeah. I think over the years like with all the bands that we have been in together or, or separate the two, we know people who are booking and promoting for other venues too like mm-hmm. in, I know a lot of the I know that one of the main bookers over in the Bremerton area and I've been friends with him for like 10 years, 10 plus years. Um, I know a couple of people that do the Tacoma scene just because of all the venues I played at back in Tacoma back in the day. I mean, did you live in Tacoma at one point? No, we just played there all the time. So there used to be a venue called the Viaduct, which is now Real Art Tacoma. Um, Then there used to be Hell's Kitchen, which is no more. Um, But a couple of guys 
that used to work there work at a couple other venues in the area i mean there's uh what's what's the one spanish ballroom is that the latest one down there i'm i'm, I'm, I'm not uh yeah i'm not well versed in tacoma I think that sounds we, familiar. it's supposed to be a pretty cool venue we brought you on board for your tacoma connection the, Good, the closest so. we That's played it. to tacoma <laughs> the closest we played to come to tacoma was louis g's and fife we didn't even quite make it over the I heard city that's limit. a pretty cool venue though it too. is it is one half of the floor is a metal venue and the other half is a family pizza joint oh that's my god yeah. that's crazy i think it is oh awesome. i stopped in there one time KGRG had a... Uh, what is KGRG? A, it's, it's a uh, radio station out of Green River Community College. Okay. So, That's why it sounds familiar. So the letter, the K... What is their so radio? All down? radio stations west of the Mississippi start with the letter K on their call letters. And the GRG is Green River Gators. Because that's their mascot. So that's... The more you, the more you know. know. Also Nirvana played uh, a show for them. But what's their, what's their radio in, dial? 89.9. But in Seattle, you don't get you it can't get because C eighty nine point five takes over mm. that the the frequency on Boo. that too. Yeah. So you get instead of today's rock. Oh, <laughs> the uh, the Louis G show we played with our last band, we were wildly misbooked in that <laughs> show. <laughs> Who else played that show? So it was Keeping Secrets final show. Okay, I remember them. Monsters. Monsters scare you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Monsters These are the craziest you. names I've ever heard. And then uh, Avoid. Avoid, who's gotten massive. They're Shout out to huge. you guys. They just Love played you guys. like the main stage at Louder Than Life yeah. Yeah. festival. But at the time, they were like. 15 years old. Yeah, they, were, they were called Avoid the Void. They were right? Avoid the Void. Yeah. They were like 15, 16. Yeah. And, uh, and they were like it. just getting started. Yeah. But you were like, oh man, these kids S- got it. So a- no- Avoid Open mm-hmm. crushed it. Like hardcore, like awesome. Yeah. We come out, and at the time it was very proggy. Like it, there was, it was rock, but there wasn't like punch like there was in this hardcore. So it yeah. was like, Raw on your face, and then we came out and do 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 do. I broke a string like three strums into the first song, had to figure out the songs with missing string, and then it was back to these like hardcore bands afterward. And the whole time on stage, I was just like, these people did not come to see us play (laughs) at all. So, how do you guys go about finding like your audience since you created a band during the pandemic? There's a few different routes you can take, and it helps. Mm -hmm. There's some online communities that. If you're, you know, like there's subreddits for various bands, mm-hmm. and if you, you know, kind of align with that kind of sound, you can, it's always worth a shot to promote yourself on them. You don't want to be spamming these different yeah. boards of just mm-hmm. promoting your band, and so you do have to have kind of a sense of tact about it. But Yeah, I mean, like, Reddit is... I love Reddit, ...is a way. double-edged sword, though, too, because you do have those true and honors. You or, can get of those torn apart on Reddit real yeah, fast. About, and you can just have... Oh, like shit on your music, or what do you? Oh mean? yeah, shit on your music. There's oh, and then so they'll f- many yeah. like they'll there's find so out many stuff about you. critics. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> they'll come yeah. after your family. Yeah. Um, the, really, the best way to expand your audience, though, is time after time, is is just keep doing shows. Keep oh yeah, working. just keep mm-hmm. booking it. Um, I mean, we just talked about avoid. They've they've been doing like a show every month since that time that they played with us at Luigi's. They've yeah. just been and hustling been their asses off. Touring all over the place. And it, and, and it showed. Yeah. Um, you never know who you're going to play in front of and who's going to go see whatever band you open for. And they'll be like, oh, these guys are exactly what I'm into. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll buy the shirt. They'll buy the, the sticker and they'll keep listening and then they'll come just see you. Yeah. And then they end up getting on a NASCAR video game. And yeah. Then, Avoid you have is, rednecks yep. showing up to your shows. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> Avoid's got that NASCAR following. Yeah. yeah, they do. And then of course, you know, there's social media, but, um, with the algorithms. Yeah. Well, uh, you gotta, you gotta play a, a real tight game on Instagram and Facebook. And I think stuff like Instagram's that. dying realistically. Well, how many times have we ever in general, just like in separate bands or whatever, put together a show where it shows like you know like a hundred people rsvp and then like 
15 fucking people show up. Mm. You know, that I blame, you can't, I blame my friends. You can't trust for those listening social media for that. Kind what of shit. is yeah. maybe social media. <laughs> You give like a little Irish thing there, I feel and like. Get it, down into the portal of social <laughs> media. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you're still going to only be able to get your friends to come out to so many shows. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be able to depend <laughs> yeah. upon the same group of friends to be there to buy your pre-sale tickets but every that goes, time. That goes back to the, <laughs> the point earlier, back in the day, going to shows was what you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But now, because everyone has access to what everyone's doing, there's that FOMO where it's like, cool, you guys are playing on Friday, but I'm going to keep my schedule open because I don't know what else is going to happen, and maybe I'll go do that. And, uh, yeah. And uh, I th- uh, Yeah, there's that. I think there's still some hesitancy on going to shows. COVID. Right now. You know? yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, like, just for me personally, like, there was, like, the Foo Fighters show that just got announced or whatever. I'm going. I know you are. But, like... I get like the opportunity to go and I'm like, I'm going to be like where it was. I'm going to be in Vegas like next weekend for like a reggae festival. And then there's that happening <laughs> the following week. And then you're going to a reggae. festival. Yeah. And then the Kraken home openers, like on the 23rd, I'm like, I don't want to go to that many mass gatherings all at the same time. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Even if I'm vaccinated, like I am, it still is like what, wherever you go, whatever you do can come home with you kind of fear. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, fuck, I don't want to ruin. Like, what happened in Vegas there. comes home with you now. It's kind of. Although that's happens, always been the case. What yeah. happens in <laughs> Vegas ends up on Facebook. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the truth. I just can't wait to see how fast the, uh, like when shows first started happening and everyone was like, I'm never turning down a concert ever again. I'm going to everything. And <laughs> hey, we're playing Friday. Oh. Hey, I yeah, got a pizza party uh, that night. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the good night man should have like a little. Someone, you should find like an animator to like make like a cartoon out of it. Well, we've been so talking actually, about doing videos. Well, uh, the album cover, which and the the logo is actually on on our uh, stickers as well. Um, speaking of Reddit, uh, saw this Star Wars art. I'm a big Star Wars nerd. I could tell. Yeah, well, you, should, <laughs> you should see my you should see my new R two D two tattoo and I want to do beep boop. <laughs> you have an R two D two tattoo? Oh yeah, and a Princess Leia. Oh, um, is it when she's in her bikini or what? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I have a crossover tattoo oh. of a Jurassic Park and Star Wars crossover. Love it. How does that even love it? It is. Yoda riding a T Rex. Oh that's shit! About that takes up his entire Jar Jar, Jar Binks <laughs> running uh, away. If you guys can't see it on the feed, it's the coolest fucking thing I've ever Holy seen shit. in my entire we'll, life. We'll take a picture of it and put it on the screen afterwards. Also. Um, that's that'll be that the takes up his for... en- yeah that takes up his entire leg. That was fun. Um, <laughs> that's craziness. But I, I uh, ran into who is now a online friend of mine. Shout out to you, Vic. Um, Thank you, Vic. Vic. Yeah, Thanks, Vic. Um, he was doing. He does these like incredible comic book style drawings of Star Wars characters, and I was like, "That's exactly the the visual that I mm-hmm. uh, that I imagined." So I reached out to him through Reddit about commissioning something, and he'd actually at that that point never done one before. Yeah, and, we were his first commission. Yeah, we piece. were his first commission, and yeah. uh, we like I sent my crappy. Like this is kind of what I want it to look like, and he sent back just this like vicious, amazing thing, and uh, yeah, we've we've been close. Uh, he like I've already talked to him about doing a bunch of other pieces for us, and I have some way down the line ideas of doing like lyric books where he yeah does like the character cover on each thing to make sort of a comic book, but That'd uh, be sick. yeah, it is. I but have... uh, it, it was just one of those like random things where cool like he's part of this bubble of creativeness now he's part of the world it yeah. is the avenue east world he is like do you guys know who duncan trussell is oh hell yeah so i i love duncan trussell i'm not i haven't officially had him on the podcast but i've had people you know he is he has this um it's a friend and also a previous guest on his podcast and my podcast named ramin nazer okay and he's like a crazy illustrator, and he's he's in the, he's in the same realm as what the mm-hmm. did you watch the Midnight Gospel show? I didn't get I didn't get to watch that oh. one, but I uh, I'm a big fan of Duncan's like open mind mentality. Yeah, just like trying not to like 
I don't know, narrow your mind around the world, you know, just trying to expand it for the better of humanity in he's, a way. He's dope. He's, he's like super dope. Like people ask, he's like, like someone I want to get on the podcast so bad, but and, and um, make, it, make it happen. If you do, it'll be awesome. He turned his podcast into a TV show that's on Netflix. So all the podcast dialogue is what's the dialogue. Oh, in the mo- I know in the what TV you're talking. Yep, yep. And, um, so my goal with my podcast tour I went on was to turn that, those interviews into a cartoon show, which might still happen. Like I, talking to some animators but i feel like that's something when i was when i was listening to your album that's what i was thinking of the entire time is like it's it's short enough but also yeah. like has enough content in that project alone that you can make that a like a full-on like cartoon series or something love that idea yeah. it's just stacking different art mediums together it's awesome works well yeah 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 it does so what, what do you guys do outside of uh being in avenue east we all got, we're all grown, grown ass men with day jobs. Yep. There yeah. is, so. since we've uh, made zero dollars um, <laughs> as musicians, uh, we're probably actually in deficit. Yeah. In anything. <laughs> Lifetime, I am very much below. Yeah. Yeah. You got to um, work a long time before you make any kind of, uh, yeah, positive profit. But, uh, I work for the University of Washington athletic department. I work in sports. So, are you a football coach or someone? No. Yeah, he is. I'm, he's a totally I'm, he's a tight yeah. ends coach. <laughs> no, uh, m- my department like is the behind the scenes like puts on on the sports and um. You're also the go to anytime they need the national anthem. Song. I've sung the national really? anthem a lot there. Yeah, yeah. Usually I'll be working working a game and someone will bail and they're like, "Hey, Tyler's here. You you want to just do it?" And I'll like take my radio off and walk out there and do it. But uh. Oh, say. yeah. Um, Can I get the ooh, first few, wow. first few lines? Let me hear it. You, you want, you want to just do it. We you can't. Gotta you gotta, if you got to, if you do a taste of the national, you got to do the you whole do the thing. Whole thing. And stand up, stand and the whole up, thing. or else <laughs> we, we're gonna we get don't, yelled at. We don't have the time or respect <laughs> to be able to commit to this. <laughs> that and honestly, I had dental surgery earlier, and I can't feel half my face still. <laughs> wait, so. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a another another podcast, but today, yeah. You just <laughs> You just came on the podcast after getting dental surgery. Well, I had booked the appointment a while ago and then he you was can't like bail on there. your dentist. And you can't bail you on, can't the bail podcast, on the podcast, you know. Yeah. I don't think I've been slurring or anything yet. So No, I I couldn't even tell. I didn't even know. And, and actually over the course of this whole thing I've slowly been like feeling getting the feeling back in my my like jaw. I'm like, "Okay, I'm back." Like <laughs> I, I, I can sing again. I, I like chugged a smoothie right before I came in here because I haven't been able to eat in a while. I was like, I just need <laughs> something That's in there. But, but anyway, yeah, I work in sports. Uh, yeah. Avid golfer. Oh. Yeah. We should all go golfing sometime. I'm in. Done. That's awesome. I will suck the entire time. Oh. You take me disc golfing? Oh, yeah, I'll do good. I just learned there's a disc golf place like a 15 minutes from my house. It's, I live right next door to it. Maybe. Lake Stevens. Right. So I live in Snohomish. Oh, okay. So you're talking about like Ferguson in a, Park, right? It's in like Monroe. Oh, Monroe? I love that course. That's oh. my favorite course in the area. Shit. Sorry. Jay knows all the disc golf. All the disc golf. I just, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just afraid I'm, I'm just going to fling the... I've I'm, done it once or twice. I got, I got the app that tells me where all the courses are. Holy shit. And uh, it tells you like... It's blowing up right now. It's so. It's such like... Does it cost money? So for the Whatever app, a so costs. I just get yeah I mean yeah you have to buy discs, but I've spent a lot of money on discs. Really, you yeah. have like a fucking like metal. Are you like I got a whole backpack full of them. And I've spent probably like two or three hundred bucks like on discs. Is it like is it like golfing where you have like different discs go different? I need my number, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have dri- distant discus. drivers, you know, for like long distance drives, like they're off the bat. Then you have your mid range. Then you have your putters. Putters are going to be the heaviest ones just because it's for short distances. You smash right into the yep. chain the cage. thing. The cage. Yeah. I'm going actually, the, the reason, another reason why I'm going to Vegas is I'm going to play at a course down there. It's a pro course down there. Holy shit. There's, yeah. a pro, there's pro disc golf course. Oh, yeah. yeah there's, there's actually pro, pro league. anything. PDGA. There's probably there's more anything money you... <laughs> in pro disc golf than there, there is, is in trying to and, be a band. And, and, and local music, yeah. <laughs> 100%. So, no, but yeah, there's there's pretty cool courses. The only time I've ever done a hole in one was at this little rink and course in Snohomish. And two, is it two hundred and five yards or 
Yeah. No, 205 feet. Sorry. 205 feet. Is it hard to bring people out to do frisbee golf with you? or It just depends. Like, Wait, well, is it disc golf or frisbee golf? Disc golf. It's the same as trying to get people to the shows. Oh. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I just play for fun. Do you go by yourself sometimes? Yeah, like just... of course. It's like, so the course that's right next to my house, I'll go there by myself because it's a way for me to get the fuck out of the house and like stay in the woods and just like not <laughs> think about anything. It's, I've, I've done regular golf like when I, so I was on my honeymoon back in 2016 and we were down in, uh, in Mexico and they had a PGA course right there <laughs> at the fucking hotel. And so I was like, I'm not going to miss out on this. So I woke up at like five o'clock in the morning and went and played by myself, you know? Yeah. And originally they were going to pair me in a group. Then they're like, well, you're the first one here. So here's a cart and just go. And it was like the best time I've ever had just being alone and just listening to like, you know, the morning other than, starting. Other than everything you did with your wife down yes, in Mexico. Yes, that too. <laughs> but other than that, but, best time you've ever had. Best time I've ever had golf. <laughs> best time I ever had golfing was just doing that because it was just by myself. You listen to other stuff. But like, I love going disc, playing disc golf by myself. Oh, and yeah. then you're not worried about like. Judgment? Judgment from like whoever you're going with. Like I play, I used, I was playing regularly with a buddy of mine who takes the shit seriously. And he's doing <laughs> tournaments. Alan he's, disappointed. He's fucking done five hole in ones in like the last month or something like that. He's stepping up his game, but he's been playing for like ten years or so. Jesus. So well, that's why I love golf. All of all of my buddies are mediocre. They're even well. They're even they're better than I am. Yeah. Except for uh, except for maybe a couple of them that I golf with mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, Jim Bo. Um, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so I'll when I golf with them, it's super competitive. Damn. And then I'll go golf with whoever. someone else, whatever, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, it's just because, like that, like when oh, yeah. everyone's really good, you're just trying to beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, I used and, to play uh, like a lot because I had a course next to me growing up. And golf, or yeah, yeah, golf, golf, regular golf. <laughs> I used to live right next door to a place called Druitt's Glen in Covington, and um, we've lost I, many good men out on Druitt's Glen. Yeah, yeah. We, we lost a lot. Um, I, uh, I I tried out for the high school team yeah. in my fresh or in my sophomore year, and I got cut on the first hole uh. on my drive mm. because I sliced it right off the bat, and I just yelled "fuck," and they cut me. <laughs> that's that's like the main part of golf. My friends actually bet on how many times I say "fuck" yeah. on the golf course. I usually try to figure out when the bet starts. Yeah. And I'll either not do it or do it in an excessive amount of times to try to sw- uh, swing the bet. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Wait, where do you live then? Uh, I live in Fremont. I'm just like right up the street. Oh, cool. So you guys are all not you. You guys are all just spread out then. Yeah. Yep. I'm the I'm the spread one. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> Hold up there. <laughs> Phrasing, guys. <laughs> Phrasing. <good>. Um, <laughs> pause. Aaron and I are both <laughs> far away, technically. Yeah. We're about like 45 minutes to an hour away. Yeah. So, because Alan's come over to my house twice. Were you spreading or? The spread. (laughs) I'm really glad I missed those. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then then what do you do for work? I fix cars. Oh. uh, After they've been in accidents. Interesting. So, I manage a shop here in Ballard. And, uh. Oh, so you, you work down here, but you have to. So you commute. Oh yeah, I commute. I commute too. It's like a fifty minute drive. Yeah. So a lot I, of time to listen to this podcast. Right. There we go. So uh yeah, I fix cars and then uh when I'm not doing that, I am a a dad. So wow. I got four year or almost four year old that is uh a mayhem is that machine. A, is that a boy or a girl? Just a little girl. She's uh she's gonna be uh the death of me. <laughs> Good night, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan, what, what do you do? Uh, I'm the operations manager for a local cupcake and coffee shop. Oh, yeah. shout out to Cupcake Royale. Yeah, I know Cupcake Royale. Yep. I've never so, been there though. I think cupcakes good. We make good cupcakes. Okay. You know, keep a body like this not eating <laughs> <laughs> cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I spend my day making sure everything's going going as they should through all those. Uh, Cafes while slinging cupcakes and making coffee myself. 
And what are your hobbies? Um, I got a well, I got an eleven month year old boy at home now. Uh, that was the that was the best part of the pandemic was uh, making him, making him a coming, baby. Ma- yep, <laughs> making the baby with yeah. the red lights. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Audie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm 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 now I'm now a, a a dad as well. But I've got a I've got a hefty um old school video game collection at home. Oh, and so uh, please yeah. shout out your Instagram. Yeah, uh, retro gamer Allen is my uh, my Instagram page for that. It's where I can show off all my like Super Nintendo games and like oh, OG shit. PlayStation long box titles and uh, and all that stuff. And that's like yeah, I like video games and I'm gonna. I'm gonna put together the collection that I could have only dreamed of having as a kid. Now that I'm uh, in my mid twenties, uh, with uh, yeah. more disposable income, <laughs> we're gonna do this podcast again in ten years, and we're still gonna we're say still, it. still gonna be yeah. standing. We'll be in our late twenties. Yeah. Wait, are, uh, are you ginger or what are you? Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm blonde first and foremost. Although right in the facial hair, it starts to get a really good shade of red, reddish, and then it gets darker. <laughs> As we go down my body, this was like the most random my, part of the interview. The, his, his feet hair are black. <laughs> my feet pitch black. Yeah, seems like you need, you need to wash them or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they've been seasoned at this point. I don't want to mess it up. It's like the Viking. Can, it's like a cast iron skillet on my oh, feet. Oh God! If I clean it too much now, it'll fall apart and you be useless. So anyway, stick. back to the video games. Uh, <laughs> Good times. Actually, a uh, real quick funny story. Uh, Alan, uh, at Christmas <laughs> this year, yeah. Um, he texts me. He's like, "Are you home?" <laughs> and actually, I, that was the first time I'd seen you in person in yeah a while. Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, what's up?" And he's like, "I'm downstairs." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm downstairs." So I go down there, and he hands me a a fairly large box. It was a Lacroix box. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, so it's rectangular. Like, yeah, and uh. <laughs> I open it up and I have a Nintendo 64. Hey. This is what I heard people bef- in the generation before us used to play. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I open it up and <laughs> sitting on top is the video game Rugrats in Paris. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea what he, <laughs> and I was just like, cool. Like this is probably <laughs> a fun game. I don't know. And he's like cracking up. He's like, no, there's another one underneath the, the paper and, and it ended up being Super Smash Brothers, which was hey. one of the best gifts I've ever ever gotten. But uh, smash your bros. <laughs> um, funny story. My uh, I came home one day and my roommate and some people were playing Rugrats in Paris and I was like, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. Well guys, what is some advice you guys each have for up and coming artists? Creators, influencers. Start with you, Tyler. The number one thing I would say is like trust your gut if you think you have something good going, regardless of what genre it is. Don't feel like you need to fall into, oh, everyone's doing this. I need to tailor what I'm creating to be this way. Um, I think a lot of artists get lost in that where they're trying to monetize things opposed to create something that feels or sounds a certain way. Yeah. Like this project, knowing that we're not going to sell a million records, I'm so down to sit sit there and be like, what would this song sound like with strings? Like mm-hmm. someone who's worried about the what it might look like to the to the masses, they might skip out on stuff that really really could strike them to the core and strike other people to the core as um as something really creative like we need to start getting creativity back out in the world so just trust your gut if if you i don't care if anyone says that it's dog shit maybe it is dog shit but if you put your heart into it and and it's something that you would put on like i i can't even tell you how many songs i've scrapped over the years where my the number one I think is is this something I'd listen to? And if I wouldn't listen to the song that I wrote, why would anyone else want to do that? Mm-hmm. But you trust your gut. Where, like with this Good Night Man EP, I was like, man, this would be fun to play live. I feel like people would sing along to this. Uh, I feel like there's like an energy behind it that, um, you know, if you're listening to it in the car or coming to a show, that it would actually, you know, bring that physicality to the art. Um, so yeah, just trust your gut. 
And you'll end up on the NAS podcast. <laughs> Moving on up. Hey. <laughs> and what's the easiest way to reach you, Tyler? Probably through this podcast. No, you can- <laughs> 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 uh, There's enough words here that we can make like one of those um, deep fakes now. There we yeah. go. <laughs> um, I think if, like we uh, all of our Avenue East stuff on on social media that we're all connected to that. So Avenue Avenue East band on uh, in- Instagram right now is probably the quickest way to get to me. And then spread your legs. Yep, spread them. Spread them. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, just let it hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one last real funny story. Here we go. So in our last band, our very first show, we packed out El Corazon, and my mom came <laughs> with one of her friends who, at the nicest way to say it, was shit-faced. And, uh, <laughs> the nicest way to say it. We... <laughs> We get done and we walk over to the bar after we get the stuff and we're stoked. Like we literally like basically sold out El Corazon. Great show. Like fantastic show. Go over there, give my mom a hug. And my mom's friend is just like offering up advice. <laughs> and she basically ended it with, you guys need to stuff your pants and just let it hang out. <laughs> and me and Alan are standing there like, what in the actual fuck is happening <laughs> what would, with this? What would be the benefit of, and of the, us? If, the, all the shows from that day that my mom's come to, she's like, mm-mm. Just stuff your pants. I was like, do, do, not, do not bring this friend. She, <laughs> lovely woman, if she ever hears this, hi. But uh, but that's out. what you said yeah, that So actually, night. to go back to your question, my advice for, for up-and-coming artists, stuff the pants, <laughs> let it hang out. There's your advice. <laughs> One very drunk middle-aged woman <laughs> said that with the utmost sincerity, so it can't be wrong. Do you know yeah. what? Get all the eyes, just fake dicks, just yeah. fake bulges. Everybody it's how, it's loves a bulge. It remembers the Chili Peppers in the socks thing, so right. Yep. Wait, what? You don't yeah. remember that? Or is this before your time? Socks on the cocks. Or after yep. your time. The Chili Peppers would play shows. Completely Red naked, hot. except for yep. a sock hanging. They would off each of their wear. A yeah, they would. They would take sock. a rubber band and wrap it their junk inside of like a tube sock. Oh yeah. God! Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's Give how they made it to now. the top. Yeah, <laughs> Give <it> away. <laughs> I'm dead. Now it's your anyway, Jay. So I'll check your advice. <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, <laughs> my best advice would be just to keep <laughs> believing in yourself. Uh, more than anything else around you or trying to influence you. Um, I had a lot of outside influence affect a lot of decisions, you know, and um, sometimes I, I try not to have any regrets about them because I've, I've lived and learned, but like sometimes I do think like, what if, if I didn't have that outside influence affect me from making those decisions, I yeah. probably would be, you know, doing more of what I love, you know, now, but I also may not have the family that I have at home right now. But honestly, like it took me a lot of growing and, you know, personal changes in my life for that to happen. So I would say, um, just believe in yourself. Just let it hang out. Just Just let it hang out. So, but that honestly, that reminds me of like, so when before I died, I played at the Showbox, the first Showbox show, we had like a ballad song on our set list, which was everything was fucking heavy, raw, raw, heavy. <laughs> and then we had a ballad song in the middle. It was all clean the entire time. And there was our bass player's mom filming this thing on like a camcorder and his neighbors, this lesbian couple that live next door to them, those at the show. And right after the song, you hear one of them go, that was a great song. That was a great song. They need more songs like this. And all of a sudden, I'm like, Curtis, you can't have your neighbors keep coming to our show. <laughs> <laughs> a whole hour of ballads. A whole hour of ballads. <laughs> Bolton core. And just letting it hang out. <laughs> oh, God. And what's the easiest way to reach you, Jay? Um... Probably through Avenue East Instagram stuff. Um, also, just on Instagram, I'm at Jaybird Middleton. And uh, 
uh, also you can probably find me on through the Aurora's Ice Instagram page too. But like, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, I, I only use social media for music and memes. So it's just, I want to follow you on my, oh fuck. I just caught, told you what the, I want to follow you on the meme account. Yeah. yeah, not, yeah. not the name of it. Uh, <laughs> in the post production, that'll be be removed. There you go. <laughs> there you but yeah, go. that's that's the place you can find me. Or at the disc golf course. Yeah, you can find me at the disc golf course <laughs> once in a while. I haven't been lately, but it's also oh, it's just, about to be rainy. You got to last few shit. days. Yeah, it's we're about to hit the shit. We got to all do it. We have to go with him. Done. Next Done. Monday, I think it's sunny. Another another place you can find me, and maybe Alan. There's a lot of karaoke places around Seattle. <laughs> really? We do rip it up at karaoke. I yeah. bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll That's bo- you. It's Whitney Houston, Amy Winehouse. Do all that stuff. There we go. And Alan, what's the what's some advice you have? Um, I would say when you're working with stuff, make sure you've got the same goals as your collaborators. So... Um, Set goals for what you're trying to do. If it's to put out an album, what do you got to do to, you know, write these songs, record these songs, produce them, and have them sound like you want? If it is to go out there and play shows, make sure that's the priority that you're setting and make sure that everybody involved with it is on the same wavelength. Um, and because uh, I've been in situations where I've been with, you know, I was in a band in high school where um, in, uh, in, three years we put out two full-length albums and played three shows and i was just hurting to go on tour to start playing to just like do that whole thing and that just wasn't what everybody else in the band uh was really wanting to focus on and it was a really big point of frustration for me and uh and that kind of just philosophy of making sure you're all on the same page with what you're doing um really carries on universally for all artistic endeavors um and so just make sure you're you're all have the same goals in mind and and that you're all working together to achieve them um and not just kind of sitting around waiting for stuff to happen um you're just going to keep on working harder and uh making mistakes and having good shows and having just shit shows and just keep going because it's only going to get better and easier in a lot of ways uh the more you work at it yes yeah. sir most easiest way to reach you uh probably instagram um just my name alan gephardt on is uh, i'm pretty sure how you find me on instagram or you can also follow um <clears throat> retro gamer alan uh <laughs> for the latest in uh my video game collection um <laughs> depends on if you want video game content or kid content right <laughs> wait Pictures of my child. Okay. And hot and dinners. A and lot dinners, of dinners. A lot of a lot of good food as well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. There we go. Well, you guys have been lovely guests. Well, thank you for, well, having, thanks for, having, for having us. Thanks for having us. Of course. Yeah. This is the NAS podcast with Avenue East. East. We did it. Let it hang out. Let it hang, <laughs> Let it hang out.